Good evening, and welcome to the Gothic Bohemian Salon. This is Julifer. Tonight I'm going to talk about creating sacred space in the home. Altars and um, symbolic areas that you can use as focal points for energy, places to celebrate the transitions in life, the passing of seasons, important holidays, birthdays, weddings, births, deaths, etc. Now this can be as useful for an atheist as it is for somebody who believes in a higher power. It doesn't matter what religion you are or what you believe in, creating a sacred space or an altar is something that anyone can do and there's nothing um, untoward or evil about it. Uh, it's all in how you put it together and what you do with it. That's what determines its function and form and it can be as unique as you are. There's no formula, though there's a few simple things that it's nice to have if you want to be able to focus your energy. First off, you need some sort of space to set aside for this work. And it is kind of like work in a way, um, but it's also meditation, uh, focus, centering, grounding, etc. Be a place for all those things. So first you need to find a place in your home where you're not going to be disturbed, where you can shut a door and take a few moments by yourself to use the altar and create the altar. Something that's not going to be disturbed by other people Make sure that once you've set it up, people understand that it's not somewhere to casually drop their keys or drape their coat over or um, fiddle with in any way. You want to keep it um, for yourself. It can be something for you as a private individual or something that your whole family uses. That's fine, just as long as it's kept for this particular purpose. Now, um, there's uh, a lot of different items that you can get. Um, you can spend a lot of money, you can spend a little bit of money. There's a lot of different types of uh, furniture that could accommodate this kind of thing. Anything from a low bench to an ornate um, side table or um, even a sideboard or something like that, a uh, fireplace. Um, mantle piece is a really good spot, uh, particularly with the hearth there. Even down on the floor by the hearth, if you don't have animals or children that can get into the items that you're going to be using in your sacred space or on your altar. It doesn't need to be an altar, it can be a focal point, a place for meditation, um, for solitude, for prayer, for um, celebration. You don't need to believe in any particular pantheon of gods or goddesses. You don't need to believe in a higher power. This um, is all relative. So it can be basically whatever suits you personally. So once you've determined where your space is going to be and um, what you're going to use to create the space, what kind of furniture or surface you're going to be using, you might consider some sort of cloth, an altar cloth, to cover the surface. This can be um, anything from a nice uh, scarf. Um, recommendations are silk, uh, velvet, um, uh, cotton velvet is fine, silk velvet is fine, 
um, silk scarves are good for this sort of thing. Vintage uh, scarves can be good even. Um, some of the old velvet scarves that uh, men used to wear with their dinner jackets in the 30s can be really nice on an altar actually. Or sometimes you can find really nice Dubore velvet. You can make the altar cloth yourself. If you want, you can um, paint symbols or um, something else that means something to you on the cloth. Uh, what's important is that it cover the table or um, area that you're going to be using and if uh, possible it's nice to have something that's maybe reversible. It's also nice to be able to change the cloth periodically. So besides an altar cloth what might you want to have in your space? It's kind of nice to have some sort of shelf either nearby or underneath or inside the piece of furniture that you're using in order to keep your supplies. Um, one thing you're probably going to need is candles and you can go to the supermarket and find candles like this for about a dollar to um, four dollars depending on where you get them. You can also find more specific candles um, for various saints and things like that, particularly in um, uh, neighborhoods where the population is Catholic, um, if that interests you. Uh, if you go to a bodega or an occult store, you can find candles like this one, this uh, Bayberry candle which is for luck in the home and financial good fortune. It's a green candle. The color of the candle does uh, have significance. The colors are pretty simple actually. They're sort of self-explanatory. Um, white is for purity. Black is for grounding. Blue is for the subconscious. Green is for growth and wealth. Um, yellow is for energy and healing. Um, let's see. Purple is for justice, fairness, uh, and balance. Um, Mm, have I left anything out? Orange um, is for energy, um, also could be used for healing, uh, and um, oh, red is for love and uh, sex, and let's see. think we got them all. You can also find candles sometimes or make candles with images on them like this one. This is a Gustav Klimt painting of Judith I believe. Or you can even go so far as to make your own magical candle uh, like this Marquis de Sade sexual healing candle with an image of the marquee on it and then a quote from him on the back. Um, this was something that sort of an artsy store used to sell down in the Haight-Ashbury. But um, you can do all sorts of ideas for candles. Um, you could do a very beautiful gothic candles using images of cemeteries with black silk roses around the base or um, beads or any sort of embellishment that you want on them. You can get um, these candles in glass in nearly every color so uh, that's pretty useful. You can of course use regular candles, um, candlesticks like this one, 
and of course you can find um, handles like this in every color as well. Um, I like to hang things off my candles a lot. So jewelry becomes part of part of the whole altar. So various um, rings that I might want to wear uh, on a particular day to represent something might be charged on the altar, for example. Uh, I'll talk about that more in a bit. What other things might you want on the altar? Um, stones. Different stones have different properties. If you go into any occult or um, spiritual store, you'll probably find baskets of various uh, polished or unpolished stones with the meanings um, uh, clearly marked, or you can ask the person who works there what the different meanings of the stones are, or you can look that up um, on the internet or in uh, um, beginners books or books on um, gemology. Also, it's nice to have a vase for flowers, an incense burner, or a cauldron. Um, as many candle holders as you like. Um, also, images of uh, nature um, or any of the pantheon of gods and goddesses that may speak to you on some level. You can get um, small statues of gods and goddesses, uh, particularly of the Greek and Roman and the Egyptian. Really tiny little statues um, such as this one. I also put things from nature on my altar. I have right now a black coral branch, um, dried coral, um, that has feathers intertwined in the branches. There's also sand dollars, a slab of marble, uh, a, an old key, a very, very old large key. Um, various uh, vessels for um, herbal mixtures and water, an incense burner, um, dried roses, and a necklace made of myrrh beads. Uh, good incenses are important if you can find um, good Japanese incense. Um, they come in pretty basic scents, and the scents mean different things, um, and you can look those things up uh, as well. There's also incense that's made for specific purposes, or you can make your own incense um, just by grinding herbs and uh, resins, powders together to make incense. I prefer the powder kind of incense which burns on its own, but sometimes you get incense that needs to be burnt on charcoal, and there are these little round um, briquettes that you can buy at any occult store, and sometimes at um, uh, other kinds of um, stores like uh, health food stores, um, bodegas, uh, places like that. Um, you can use old ashtrays to burn your incense on. It's good to have some sort of heat resistant um, bowl or a slab of rock or something like that. Just make sure that whatever you're burning on isn't going to have a chemical reaction that's going to put any sort of gaseous material in the air. I have a malachite rock 
that I burnt some incense on, and I found out later that um, malachite is actually poisonous when breathed in, so um, that wasn't a very good idea, and I'm glad I found out. You can find all sorts of really lovely scented candles and candles that are already dedicated to various purposes, from healing to um, uh, grounding, etc. and so forth. Um, you can also have candles blessed and consecrated at occult stores, usually like the Babura candle that I showed you, um, they will take little symbols and put them on the, the top and sometimes little bits of gemstones and herbs to kind of consecrate it, consecrate it to a particular thing. They'll dress it with uh, perfume oils that are dedicated to various things like healing or uh, sexual energy or grounding, things like that, meditation whatever it is that you want to work at um, at your sacred space. So getting to what the sacred space is to be used for, basically it's a focal point for your life. It's a way to ritualize your plans, ideas, hopes, wishes, dreams, um, a way to put your energy in that direction in order to manifest in the world what you want to have occur. And these, of course, should be things that involve only you. You don't want to be trying to do something to, at, or for another person unless um, perhaps it's a healing candle or grounding or something benign like that. Um, but best, it's 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 usually best to leave that to that person to take care of um, and work on yourself, particularly if you're just beginning at this sort of thing. You can also use the space um, or the altar as a focal point for meditation. So you don't need to believe in any sort of deity, like I said before, in order to use the space. But if you do, then it can also be used to um, acknowledge or glorify, communicate, uh, give homage to um, a god or goddess that you feel akin to in some way, or more than one. And in order to do that, you want to have some representation of that uh, god or goddess. So you can find uh, images um, and put them in a frame on the altar uh, or prop them up. Also, another useful tool is a tarot deck. You can take cards out of the tarot deck and use them to focus energy towards certain goals. Um, you can do a reading and take a card out of the reading that seems significant to you at the time. Uh, you can use things um, symbolically, uh, so you can create things like um, pentacles out of branches and flowers, or um, layer flowers over the altar. Uh, you can have a bowl filled with water with a single gardenia floating in it. Um, it's nice to put fresh flowers on the altar if possible, or if not, dried flowers are okay too. Um, even silk flowers in a pinch will do, uh, particularly if they're nice. Um, like I said, I drape my jewelry on my altar quite frequently, um, particularly things that are made out of real gems and real metals. Um, well, not real metals, but things like silver and gold and more precious metals. Um, you can use it to celebrate uh, holidays, such as um, 
New Year's, uh, Christmas, um, Easter, etc., or even things like um, Sowen or All Hallows Eve is a popular holiday. Um, Bridget is um, the returning of light to to us um, after the long winter time that's celebrated on February 1st or 2nd. Um, Ostara is celebrated around Easter time and it's um, rebirth. There is um, the solstices and the equinoxes are usually celebrated and the full moon every month can also be celebrated. It's a good idea to have a moon chart in your sacred space to see whether the moon is waxing or waning when you do your workings at your altar. Um, a waxing moon means that the moon is getting bigger and generally speaking when you want things to increase or multiply, you would do it during the waxing moon. If you want to decrease, banish, or get rid of things, that would be done during the waning moon. And then other important things are done at the full moon. And um, there are even some rituals that are done at the dark of the moon. It's a good idea to get um, an almanac to uh, let you know about the exact dates for the equinoxes and solstices and also for the moon phases. It's helpful to know what planet the moon is in on any given day. It's also useful to know the um, ruling planets for each day of the week. Uh, ruling gods and goddesses for each day of the week and um, basically the correspondences between these things. So let's see, you have an altar cloth, you have candles, you have an incense burner or a cauldron, um, and you have a shelf to keep anything extra what other things might you want or need. Um, a tarot deck is nice to have, uh, either to focus on a card and to um, mnemonically open your mind so that you can go on a journey through the card and see what might be in your subconscious or what you might be looking forward to in the future. Um, a set of runes is nice to have um, because you can pull out a rune if you want to have sort of a quick idea of what's going on in a particular situation or something like that. Um, those sorts of things are very useful. The Yi Jing is a really great tool. Um, so the Book of Changes is uh, nice to have um, in your altar space. Um, various um, rocks and stones, either smoothed or rough, can be um, used over and over again for various workings. Um, you'd want to have your incenses there and your extra candles. Um, never leave candles unattended and always um, pay attention when you're um, doing anything with fire. Uh, it's nice to have wine or um, other types of spirits. Um, absinthe has been used ritually by people for uh, quite, a, quite a bit of the 20th century now. I think that's really mostly what I wanted to say. I hope that this has been interesting and useful to you. If you'd like me to talk more about this subject, um, please say so in the comments below. If you're interested 
in magic or Wicca, paganism, or the Western magical traditions. I have been trained in some of those things and have studied for quite some time. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Please leave your comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you so much for joining me in the Gothic Bohemian Salon. And remember, embrace the darkness. Good night.